every day we are reminded more and more of the fact that space is a mystery that may never be completely solved. It has truly earned its name as the final frontier, as the more we learn about it, the more mysteries arise and the more questions demand an answer. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we will be diving into three interesting space discoveries and what they showed us or didn't about the vast expanse stretching infinitely beyond us. Hubble Spot's Farthest Star Ever Seen the universe is constantly expanding at an infinite rate, so even if we were able to fully understand every aspect of the mysterious and otherworldly cosmos in our immediate vicinity, we would be able to expand our discoveries ever outward with no end. Currently, we are only able to see as far as our best technology will allow us, and that alone has presented more than enough mysteries to busy astronomers for the next several decades. Yet recently progress was made in the progressive march onwards and outwards as the famous Hubble Space Telescope spotted the farthest star ever yet seen. This record-setting spot of distant light was also the earliest star ever seen, having shone almost 13 billion years ago, only 900 million years after the universe was conceived in the Big Bang. Despite our best efforts, individual stars such as this one are often impossible to make out at such a distance due to their small size when compared to the vastness of space and the overpowering brightness of surrounding galaxies. The Hubble Space Telescope team was able to apply Einstein's theory of general relativity, which helps to explain the way that gravity bends light passing through space, in order to use an intervening galaxy cluster as a magnifying lens of sorts to amplify the much smaller star in the distance. Brian Welch a graduate student at Johns Hopkins University and the author of a paper describing the study, told the New York Times that it was an unexpected surprise to find something so small. As the Hubble Space Telescope team has been surveying 41 galaxy clusters, Welch conceded that when you look at a bunch of really massive galaxy clusters, there's a good chance that you can find some really highly magnified objects behind them. Using a galaxy as a magnifying glass is not as easy as it sounds though, as the light is stretched in an arc, with ripples and bright spots that distort the objects coming through. Astronomers attempting to use this method must try to line up the distorted ripples with points of light according to the frequency of their wavelengths to make sense of what lies behind the galaxies. The discovery of a single star during this chaos is rendered even more amazing. The new star, which was nicknamed Irindal, appears as though it will be aligned to be magnified by the galaxy cluster for the next several years at least, giving astronomers plenty of time to study the components of the oldest and farthest star yet discovered. During this time, researchers hope to be able to use the brand new James Webb Space Telescope, which was designed to gather light at longer infrared wavelengths, to measure the brightness of the star across a spectrum of wavelengths to determine the temperature of the new star. This will allow researchers to definitively say that the star is indeed a star and not another faintly glowing object far in the distance. This information could tell us a great deal about what stars looked like in the early days of the universe, a time period that we know very little about. Kepler-62e has a very hospitable climate for life. Along with the attempt to peer ever further into the universe surrounding us comes the search for extraterrestrial life and the pursuit of the answer to the question, are we alone in the universe? Although many people hope for the discovery of the types of advanced alien civilization that feature prominently in science fiction novels, astronomers are often searching for more microscopic signs of life. Although extraterrestrial life has not yet been discovered, there have been several examples of locations that appear extremely hospitable for life, and Kepler-62e is among this number. An exoplanet orbiting approximately 1200 light-years from Earth, Kepler-62e is a water world that appears to be a similar size to Earth and orbits in what is known as the habitable region of its star, making it an excellent candidate for conditions favorable for life. In fact, the planet has such marked similarities to Earth that it is known as a super-Earth due to its striking parallels with our own planet, just in a larger body. Even better was the discovery of a second super-Earth within the same system, Kepler-62f, although this second candidate lies much farther from the Sun, 
making the surface much colder and less likely to be hospitable for life. Researchers who conducted a modeling study to predict the conditions of the two planets hypothesized that both planets are likely covered almost entirely in water, which is a huge plus for those interested in studying the potential for life there. Kepler-62e is thought to be damp, warm, and humid across its entire surface, including the areas surrounding the poles, while Kepler-62f is likely much colder but still a potential candidate for life forms. Although having a host planet entirely covered in water might make things difficult for humans attempting to create civilization on the planet, researchers do not think that this would have been a deterrent for life originating on Kepler-62e. Kepler's science principal investigator, Bill Barucki, with NASA's Ames Research Center, was speculative about the possibilities on the planet, saying, at least in our ocean, we have flying fish. They fly to get away from predators. So we might find that they have evolved birds on this ocean planet. Look at our own ocean. It's just full of life. We think, in fact, life on Earth might have begun there. Although the matter of whether life does in fact exist on either of these planets is still purely speculation, some think that the lure of finding a so-called Earth 2.0 could be so great that it could drive massive space travel advances to fuel the search. Locating potential planets such as Kepler-62e and Kepler-62f serves only to enhance this drive and fuel the push for greater technological advances so that we may better study the unique worlds around us. What happens to our consciousness when we sleep? The human body continues to amaze and perplex us all. It is essentially a machine that works 24-7 only to slightly power down during sleep. While our muscles rest, our essential organs continue without pause. The most pressing question for scientists that study sleep is this. What happens to our minds while we sleep? Thousands of highly trained specialists have tried to answer this question, and it seems that they are inching closer to the answer. A new theory has been formed as to where our brains go when we fall asleep. According to recent studies, a super network in the center of the brain is the missing piece to this puzzle. Researchers in Finland have discovered a central core network brimming with the same activity regardless of whether a person goes to sleep normally or loses consciousness due to anesthesia. It seems that these natural mechanisms provide the powerhouse to human consciousness. Two groundbreaking experiments from the University of Turku have found new information on this phenomenon. These experiments have revealed the inner workings of the brain's central core network for the first time. They have done so by focusing on the connection of consciousness to how people respond when they are asleep. One of these experiments studied the brain activity of people who had been anesthetized while the other examined how brains respond to natural sleep. With the use of brain imaging and questioning the patient after waking up, scientists found something rather peculiar. The questions that these scientists asked consisted of how aware were you of your surroundings and what did you dream of? Researchers have found that natural sleep and experimental anesthesia are powerful research tools in the study of human consciousness. In the past, it has been assumed that a lack of meaningful response is proof of unconsciousness. However, discoveries have shown that being unresponsive does not necessarily mean that the patient is unconscious. The researchers have focused their efforts on networks in the brain that they believe are linked with human consciousness. They study these areas by measuring the brain activity of patients as they fall asleep and those who undergo anesthesia via a PET scan. PET scans involve an imaging test that allows doctors to see how your brain is functioning. Scientists have located specific regions in the brain that experienced less blood flow when one of the volunteers lost consciousness and more blood flow when they regained awareness. It has been found that general anesthesia closely resembles normal sleep in a way that has been previously disputed, says Harry Sheening. As a result of the minimal delay between the awakenings and the interviews, the current results add significantly to our understanding of the nature of the anesthetic state. Against a common belief, full loss of consciousness is not needed for successful general anesthesia, as it is sufficient to just disconnect the patient's experiences from what is going on in the operating room explains Annalotta Sheinin.
But what do you make of these discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comments section below and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.